Bonjour everyone, welcome to another Diecast Showcase. And uh, as has uh, become in tradition, uh, today we're going to be doing another uh, Free Friday. Um, so, um, besides the Free Friday, basically, um, today there's only one find that uh, I wanted to share with you guys. It's nothing uh, special, it's just something uh, that's a little bit uh, out of the ordinary. Um, upon um, uh, going through. Uh, ENF a big ENF case drop. I did stumble upon a pretty cool uh, error, and I think it's the first time I find an error of this nature. This is a Hot Wheels uh, mainline, the uh, the uh, uh, Mark II uh, Escort. Uh, so as you can see, probably already, it's pretty darn tweaked out. Uh, reason is, uh, it was definitely misriveted. Definitely, definitely misriveted, as you can see on the bottom there. Look at that front end, eh? I posted this up on uh, my Instagram, and uh, you know, to me, it looks like a pre-crash rally car, literally. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. I mean, it's I don't pick up a whole lot of errors. I mean, I there, there was also uh, one of those uh, Audi IMSA cars that was all uh, that was tweaked out like this, but you know, just tweaked out because probably a little bit too much pressure got applied on the base. But like not miscentered like that. That's that's pretty unique. You can actually see daylight in there, uh, in between the uh, metal body and the uh, the actual uh, yeah plastic base. Pretty bad. Either way, I thought there was a pretty cool find there. So just wanted to start off with that. Um, another thing I wanted to. Uh, 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 go through um, is pretty much you know just some uh, more of those casts that I have a couple variations of but none of them loose um, so I wanted to go through that um, you know crack some stuff open there got about uh, maybe what uh, 10 cars that I want to open today so uh, without further ado we'll get started and we'll start uh, normally I start with the mainline stuff go go direct to the more premium stuff thought I'd start today with the uh, this guy here um, have about eight uh, total of the three waves of uh, ultra hots that I decided to pick up this one being one of them because of the fact that um, you know the El Camino casting the only ones that I had picked up were the art cars that uh, literally besides being great bodies for customs not a whole lot that uh, warrants keeping especially one has a blue base the other has a pink base so kind of hard to work with this Ultra Hots version, though, uh, as I've shown when I picked it up originally uh, quite a while ago, um, you know, it's got the Spectra Flame paint. It's got the uh, Campos front and rear. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have Ultra Hots, though, which is kind of a bummer. And that's some, that kind of a gripe I have with this series. The fact that not all of them have Ultra Hots, but, you know, that's just me there. But, um, you know, I was really happy to see this finally done in somewhat of a normal... Uh, Somewhat of a normal type of, uh, you know, I don't know, the blade groovy 80s style, you know, uh, paint scheme. Um, you know, it's got the red five spokes and whatnot. And I was really happy to find, find that. And then basically, what do we get? Uh, like literally a case or two later out of the main line, a better version. Uh, this one I just pulled out because basically this was actually a crack. I, I did crack this open because um, I found that uh, the lack of tampos was really, really sad on this one. And especially uh, seeing how easy they are to add. So kind of decided to go ahead and add the tampos myself, basically, at least as I would want them to be. So just like simple front light, grill details. You know, the lower vents in the uh, bumper, as well as very, very simple rear lights and a little bit of an exhaust detail there, some silver and black. So the, the door handle is also in silver because I found that uh, kind of needed the contrast, honestly. Sorry about the, it's a little bit dark there. It's a light gleam on the, uh, on the card there. There we go. So yeah, you know, a uh, little bit of, it's a very, very nice paint job. You know, I love the wheels. The slot fives are always a good choice of wheels, especially on, you know, 70s, 80s era cars, you know, of uh, American descent, at least. 
look great on a bunch of stuff but especially on american cars so yeah just wanted to show that off so i opened that added a couple details just resealed it right afterwards and uh you keep it carded as is because you know literally the details i added on the front are based on the what i see on the card so there you go um so now that we checked out this uh this one look it has a cracked uh pretty badly cracked bubble surprisingly enough it's not all that visible uh, it is it's cracked so it's cracked might as well crack it so this is going to be the first crack of the day throw that out that paint though eh? that is shiny talk about a golden nugget eh yeah black base good kind of a sinister look um you know it's cool also that uh that rear the, those rear lights they kind of tie in the red chrome wheels um it's pretty groovy i don't know i may try and do like a lot of people have done with these casts and uh basically just do a full tampo removal on it well obviously except for the front and rear maybe i'll leave the uh cow the reverse cow hood uh black as well to match with the uh, the bed probably probably just remove the side tampos basically see how that looks but either way uh, definitely a cool start to uh to the showcase here so this one over here we have enough today that uh, i don't think we'll need to do uh need to do anything creative in regards to lining them up super tight there but uh uh let's see next up uh let's continue with you know we'll start with the more recent stuff and kind of like backtrack so another cast surprisingly i didn't have loose and that you know i thought it'd be a good idea to have loose uh delorean uh, dmc 12 uh so yeah um the variation should be pretty cool to detail out very easy to detail out actually a steady hand and uh patience so gold 10 spokes good looking good looking stuff nice retro looking uh paint job as well uh, i didn't want to crack back to the future one because uh you know prefer to keep that one carded and um i was debating between this and the mystery model and i know for a fact that the mystery model basically is kind of funky in the, the sense of the colors of the glass portion and whatnot so and i do have uh yeah the decades one that i'm not ready to crack open yet so here we go I'll just do uh let's do this one basically There we go. Nice. Yeah. Front light's going to be super easy to add on this one. The feeling the rear wheel is kind of a little bit tweaked. Just me, does that look crooked to you guys? Had a caster. Too much a toe in. I don't know. Nah, that seemed to have. Doesn't doesn't uh, hinder its ability to roll or anything, but just a slight, slight, slightly off whack. Love the fact that these wheels are kind of concave as well. It's a nice color. I mean, with the kind of uh, I, I I really don't like cool white, so everything looks, especially the warmer tones, that kind of get washed out with the with the warm uh, white light that I use here. So. These are very, very gold, almost bronze metallic, basically. So, as you guys would probably know if you have this uh, this specific variety of the uh, DMC-12 already. So, um, yeah, very nice cast details, all in all. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one to detail. I didn't know this thing had a dual exhaust. Hmm. Cool. All right, definitely cool. Going through the whole history of the DeLorean. Or how under power it was from the PVR V6, but you know, still, you know, cool, uh, cool one to have. Uh, let's see, out of the rest, um, well, there, here's one that uh, I didn't have a loose cast of and uh, definitely wanted. Um, plus, it ties into uh, 
future video that I'm planning, the uh, Lancia Delta Integrale. Kind of looks like an Evo model uh, because of that upright uh, rear spoiler. And um, those are really uh, the mid uh, the mid uh, the mid nineties last of the line type uh, are definitely the ones that had this kind of feature. But uh, yeah, love the tampo work in front. Definitely a lot of details missing in the back, which uh, will be remedied. Um, not to worry. So uh, and yeah, number eight. So um, we'll see. Uh, that falls into the little lineup that I have planned for you guys. So, yeah, and I love that dark green. Gotta see this out there. Felt like cracking the the white one, but uh, I really wanted uh, really wanted to let this this green one breathe. Plus, the aero discs on this one work really well. In use of the fact that this car was developed in the uh, in the eighties. So. All right, let's check this out a little bit closer. Oh, I love the fact this has a tan interior. I kind of overlooked the fact that it had a tan interior. Again, B pillars missing. Always has been doing this of late, and uh, very. It is definitely metallic paint. You can see the glimmer there, but it's definitely not uh, the most. Uh, the most metal flake uh, induced paint that I've seen. Really well done front tampos. Like kudos, kudos metal and Hot Wheels. This is really well done. Very well done tampo or very precise. This this just looks like basically somebody took a rally livery and just applied it onto. Like a uh, car, uh, fr you know, brand new in the, from the early '90s that uh, had uh, the optional uh, factory pinstriping kind of designs that were pretty popular for a certain period of time. If, if you're uh, about, uh, you know, if you're uh, in your 30s or 40s, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, they were never cool, but you know, they were pre prevalent for a while. Yeah, this is ex this exhaust is gonna be really, really easy to detail. Very cool. Very, very cool. Yep. Pretty clean cast details too, which should make this a fun little project. And we got mirrors. Of course, Delta Integrales are all left-hand drive so even the ones sold in japan and the uk so there you go fun fact um next up yeah i was uh kind of hesitating on which one of these to open um and i decided what the heck not i'm gonna go with the svo in the uh, purple i'm gonna keep the uh silver one um on card since one I may be letting it go and two because of the fact that it has a slight tampo slide so I'm gonna go with this one crack it open this is gonna be another one that's gonna be really fun to detail I've detailed a couple Fox bodies so far uh, the 92 uh, G the 92 uh, model ones there the SVO is going to be fun to do as well it's got those inset um, sealed beam uh, headlights so, absence of a front grill, uh, like a full front grill, since uh, Ford uh, needed most the uh, air to go to the intercooler. Again, this gray color for the wheels is really, really nice. Uh, yeah, well, it's a cool, it's a cool cast, and I mean. Fox Body is my favorite genera generation of Mustangs, the one I grew up with, and the one that, uh, you know, before these went up crazy in price, was kind of like the go-to beater sport car, you know. Love the offset, uh, the offset hood scoop there, the Naka Duck here, so. And again, mirrors. Twin, twin, uh, low and medium rise spoilers kind of to 
uh, kind of like to um, precursor, I guess, the Mercur uh, XR4Ti, which, again, based on the Ford Sierra. Two point three Pinto four, the turbocharger, later intercooled. I mean, these were uh, pretty much the same horsepower as the uh, five O's, so not to be uh, not to be uh, looked down upon. That's for sure. All right, and, uh, how about we go a little bit more uh, tuner car on this one? It's pretty much the only hardcore tuner car that's going to be in this lineup. The white version of the uh, Liberty Walk Huracan Coupe. Decided to do this one because it has matching wheels front and back. Um, and also, you know, again, it's white, easy to detail. But I'm not sure I'll be uh, doing uh, doing any type of detail work on this one. Quite honestly, because. Uh, Looks really clean as is. I do feel like adding a little bit of touch of a red on the back because the back is really, really naked. But uh, that remains to be seen. We'll see what I do with this. Either way, we know what we're doing with it right now. Let's crack in this one open too. Yeah, that came off nice. Yeah, I definitely wanted to keep the gray one on card, the first one. Uh, this one is a little bit cleaner, I find, if we're talking about the overall execution but nowhere near as fun to look at, so. And, um, yeah, it's gonna be a fun detail job, too. Yeah, just, just tiny touches here and there, as I'd normally do, as you saw in the, uh, as you saw in that Camino, basically. You know, not going overboard, but just adding as subtle little touches to make it that much more realistic. Might change the color of the wheels, though. I kind of feel like making those gold or bronze. Kind of lose, uh, kind of lose the uh, the details of the wheel unless you got lights smack on them like this. So, but yeah, it's a nice cast though. It's a very nice cast. So, just start a second row out right over here. Why not? Go. All right. There you go. Let's go uh, recenter this a little bit. There we go. All right. Um, next up, I'm going to go all out German for the next couple cars. All out Germany. Next one I'm going to crack open. Oh, I actually started cracking it open even before showing it to you. I had two varieties of this one. The gray one, uh, kind of like that um, asphalt gray, and uh, this one that I picked up actually not all that long ago. I picked it up because I find it really cool. The PR5s in, uh, are in chrome blue with the blue metallic paint, which is a really nice hue. This is probably the longest name of a car on a Hot Wheels card, right? Porsche Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid Sport Turismo. That's a mouthful for you. So this one was out of the Porsche collection, whereas the other version, the gray one, is out of the green speed. Um, this is a really, really nice shade of blue. Look at that. That is a really nice shade of blue. And this was uh, one of those casts that just popped up uh, post-COVID. The huge drops of in our dollar stores uh, up here of uh, all kinds of the year before type cases so never picked this one up although i saw a couple times on the pegs and uh yeah i said to myself hey why the heck not why the heck not looks great on the with the blue on blue so i love wagons this one's kind of like one of the more classy wagons so very cool it's kind of like you got the sports car the daily driver Nice looking. And uh, finish off the Euros with um, a couple of uh, 
couple of cars that uh, I have pretty much all variations of except the exclusive you guys get, get in, the, in the U.S. Uh, from stores we don't have in Canada. But I wanted to uh, crack open this matching pair here. The Porsche, partially Porsche, Porsche developed 500E as well as the partially Porsche developed Audi RS2. Talking about two cars that were uh, developed uh, with the, the help of Porsche during a time where Porsche was close to going bankrupt. Uh, if we're talking about an era specifically, we're really talking about the uh, 964 era that uh, unfortunately uh, was not very profitable for Porsche. And uh, 993 more or less more or less helped a little bit. Uh, especially when they announced they were going water cold and what actually saved Porsche as everybody knows is the advent of the Cayenne as well as the Boxster as well obviously cheaper Porsche than the Cayman came along as well but you know going SUV is really what saved them so here we go I mean these two cars are definitely uh, definitely two icons of the mid 90s uh both of both of these i believe were released in 94 maybe 93 for the uh 500e um definitely you see more porsche in the rs2 versus the 500e start off with the 500e uh you know it's kind of hard to differentiate a 500e from a regular like uh e420 320 or any type of other uh, variants there were many many motors especially if you're in Europe versus uh, over here where we got one diesel one six uh, actually no two sixes and two v8s so this one is in a nice silver nice plain silver kind of reminiscent to uh, the uh, villain car from the first Taxi movie, the French uh, original version from France. Um, it's a very German color, so um, I believe there's a I believe there's a premium version of this coming with the two tone paint, and. Hope that actually comes to fruition but this is a really really nice one pretty much the fastest sedan at time of release in the world and the only ones that would beat it would be the amgs the hammers and whatnot basically that are based on literally the same car and now my favorite european car that would be eligible for import right now the audi rs2 and uh, cool facts about this car i mean there's so many little Porsche touches doesn't really necessarily show on the cast in all respects there but this car had well first and foremost Porsche wheels which obviously here they're the five spokes so the right number of spokes definitely not the same design um, you had the um, bunch of carryover 964 Porsche parts uh, namely the door handles the mirrors again not really you know represented here but it's kind of normal the scale uh the uh, the s2 and the rs2 did not share the same uh bumper lights straight off of a 964 on the case of an rs2 whereas they were uh, audi specific on the s2 and obviously you know the audi 90 and whatnot there um porsche design front bumper not specific specific to a porsche model but designed by porsche uh porsche brakes as well in there there's a bunch of stuff i mean and uh, i believe if i'm not mistaken the steering uh the, no the steering wheel actually was audi it was not porsche because porsche 964 steering wheels are not nice to look at um you know no hate towards porsche because i'm a massive porsche fan as a lot of you guys are but them steering wheels in the i mean besides maybe the first uh 996s i mean pretty much the 964s had the worst uh, steering wheels especially the early ones um but yeah the original super wagon maybe i mean there's obviously the uh 
there's obviously also the uh, Audi, uh, uh, sorry, BMW uh, E34 uh, M5 um, Touring, but, you know, it's something else. Um, I thought I'd finish up with a couple matchboxes. So here we have, first and foremost, uh, a couple of Mopars. Um, again, I did this again. So, yeah. Dodge Charger. Had to pick this one up. I already had it in that uh, same kind of slate gray as the uh, the uh, Porsche Panamera variant that uh, I was speaking of. But uh, I had to get this this purple one. You really like a modern interpretation of uh, Plum Crazy Purple. Um, this is a really good casting by uh, Matchbox. The proportions of the front are a little tiny bit off if we're talking about tampo application and the actual casting details itself. But I mean, they're not off by a whole lot. Front and rear tampos are spot on. You know, not a whole lot of details missing on this car. And uh, there you go. Obviously not an SRT model, which is always cool. This is kind of like, you know, could be even an undercover car or whatnot. And, I, and the other variation I have has a dark five spokes. This one has the uh, twin 10 spokes in uh, kind of like uh, black chrome, which is really, really cool. And I mean, there's police versions of this car. There's a whole bunch of different... Uh, chargers uh made by uh made by matchbox so i mean this is pretty much the more modern challenger before uh the model gets uh kind of you know ends up extinct i guess and why not follow up with the actual originator the first charger in a nice uh hemi looking orange there been uh I, since i managed to pick up the 70th, 70th anniversary which i think personally merit, warrants more to be kept on card uh i thought why the heck not let's crack this bad boy open it's one of the casts i was most looking forward to and i mean most of the casts that i look forward to from matchbox are either jdm or something like this old school period color gloss for, for the most part, these are gloss colors and, you know, just your steelies with the beauty, beauty caps, or sorry, dog dish caps and beauty rings. Very well done rear tampo, very well executed with the charger lettering inside that full band uh, light bar in the back. Chrome base, which is perfect. Black interior, which is awesome as well. This is a new cast for last year, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, 2021. 2021, so 2022 release, yeah. And I believe there's what, uh, the 70th, I believe, is a third, or second, second color variation, with a third incoming soon in a future wave, from what I've seen from sneak peeks online. And this is a really beautiful car. It's got a fastback look, which was a big, uh, a big shock. Uh, I mean, this came out in '66. In '66, I mean, except if you were a Mustang or a Cuda, and the Cuda came a year after, the same type of, same inspiration from the styling. There's no, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of American fastbacks, so. They came a couple years later as a pretty much a generalized thing. So, but this is such a beautiful cast. I do have this cast from M2 as well. It's going to be fun to compare that eventually, especially that uh, it's light blue and this uh, bright orange will offset nicely. We're talking about a compare on between the two. Put this one here, and uh, I'm going to finish off just by showing you a little uh, project that I completed today. Um, so I had cracked open, uh, not too, too long ago, a, uh, um, uh, Challenger, actually, uh, Hemi Challenger from, uh, from, uh, I mean, the E-Case, I think, um, green one, uh, with some white stripes, and, uh, 
really wanted to customize it if we're talking about detailing and I did a pretty thorough job at it and just wanted to show you guys the final result as a close to this video so here it is um, so fully detailed no uh, no modifications per se but I really did go all out in detailing this thing there we go so basically uh, what I'd done to it, if we go through all the details, is basically, uh, well, obviously, the most obvious, I think, is the steelies in um, silver. I uh, kept the white band on the, uh, the, or the, uh, the white walls on the tires. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make these look like actual rally wheels, but, you know, the larger diameter, kind of like traffic that a little bit. Um, did all the uh, window and um, wheel arch trim in chrome. Same for the front and rear... Uh, windows um, I also did full front here black grill some lights with a little bit of a, a little bit of a black just around the bezels there full chrome around the uh, whole front uh, nose clip fog lights blacked out lower grill as well as this uh, little lip here on the bottom and finished off with full rear detailing, exhaust, as well as the uh, rear spoiler to give it a little bit more of a TA, 340 TA look. It's pretty much finished product there, so um, tell them, you guys let me know what you think. Uh, and um, yeah, there we go. So that pretty much sums up the uh, video for tonight. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you did, uh, feel free to uh, comment your feedback. Of course, uh, appreciate if you hit that like. Subscribe uh, to be uh, notified of when I upload next. And uh, I'll uh, take the opportunity to wish you an uh, excellent rest of your night, evening, day, wherever you are. Happy hunting. Stay safe. And I'll catch you on the next video. Take care. Bye.